Today, it is all about control. Facebook gives you control over your news feed. Uber tries to control the courts. And Apple puts the public in control of their iOS 9 beta. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 377 for Thursday, July 9th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash TN2 and enter the promo code TN2. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Let's get to today's big news. Facebook announced that they are letting you control what you see in your news feed. An update to the Facebook iOS app offers a revamped news feed preference section that lets you decide what you see on Facebook first instead of leaving it to an algorithm. Joining us today to talk about this is Kurt Wagner, reporter at Recode. Welcome, Kurt. Hey, Megan, how's it going? It's going well. So now we can go through Facebook and specify whose posts we want to see first, if we want to see everything that someone posts. This doesn't seem like that much of a big deal, but it is kind of a big deal for Facebook. Why? Well, uh, Facebook has relied on an algorithm to t show us things in newsfeed, basically since it created newsfeed, and the algorithm takes in all kinds of signals, you know, how much time you spend reading certain posts, what links you click on, uh, if you like something, if you're friends uh, with someone, uh, they might show things higher or lower in the feed depending on who that person is. And in this instance, they're just straight up asking you. They're saying, hey, uh, if I want to see posts from you know, Megan at the top of my feed every time I log into Facebook, I can do that now. And so they're essentially eliminating, uh, at least in some cases, all the signals that they've been collecting all this time and just kind of uh, letting you have a little bit more control. And so... It's interesting. I mean, the, the, the signals still work when you get past those initial posts. Like once I get past that post from Megan that I said I wanted to see first, um, the, the algorithm still comes into play. But it's still an interesting and kind of a different approach that they haven't had before. Well, I, I, they started doing this because it would just be completely overwhelming uh, for us to see everything that everyone posts. I mean, I, I might be wrong about this, but I think in the very beginning, that's what they did. Uh, they just, you know, you could see everybody. And if someone, you know, if your Aunt Patty posted 12 pictures of her dog every 30 minutes, you would still, you would see all of them. Uh, but then that quickly got overwhelming. So now they changed it. But the thing is that we don't really know exactly how it works. And I think that, you know, Facebook plays such a big role in so many people's lives. So I think that is is what is was part of the weird thing. That's like, well, why am I seeing one thing and why am I seeing another thing? And they have this picture of me that isn't completely accurate. Um, so I know you talked a little bit about how they, you know, how long you uh, spend on on things. Are, are there any other Facebook secrets of how the algorithm works that you've picked up in your journalism? Yeah, I mean, I've covered Facebook for a few years now, and they've, uh, I believe, two or three different times sat me down and kind of showed me how to curate my feed. And there's a lot of different uh, tips and tricks that you can use. One is, you know, there's a little uh, carrot in the top of each post. You can click on that and simply hide a post. If you're seeing too many things from a friend who, you know, was way back in high school, you're no longer, you don't want to unfriend them, but you also don't really want to see all their baby photos. You can go ahead and, and unfriend them or hide that post. Um, if you, again, if you're clicking on links and going off to certain sites or reading certain types of stories, the algorithm will realize that and try and show you more of that. And more recently, things like if you watch videos on Facebook and newsfeed, they'll start showing you more video. Um, that's been a big push for Facebook. They want a lot of people watching videos. So they're, they're taking into account how much time you're spending watching video. And then if, if you're doing that often, they'll say, okay, Kurt likes video. We're going to uh, inundate his feed with a lot more of that. So those are some of the the signals, but yes, you're right. People have kind of complained from the beginning, right? Why am I why am I seeing this? Um, or why is this showing up again on my? I've already seen this. Why is this showing up again? And sometimes that'll happen if people have been commenting on it since the last time you logged in, and and so they'll reshow something. So those are the kinds of things that I think Facebook has tried, but maybe not done a wonderful job of explaining to the public. And uh, so this is this is a little bit more straightforward. I mean, it is that fine line between what's creepy and what's useful. I mean, I think now they're even, they can tell whether you're listening to it in sound, the video, or if you're making it full screen, like all these little tiny things that uh, they think, you know, show your interest in it. 
Um, but now Facebook ads, they run down the side of the screen. And so presumably Facebook makes more money the more we scroll, uh, the more ads we see. So isn't it in their best interest to have us scrolling as much as possible? Why, why are they making this change that would have people scrolling less if they are putting what they want to see first? Right. And that was actually a question that I asked as well when they were uh, kind of showing off this new product to me. As I said, you know, a lot of these, not necessarily the ads that, that are along the side, because those will kind of remain on the side as, as you scroll down, whether you go 100 posts or, or five posts, those will always be there. But it's the in, the in feed ads, the, those native ads that are within news feed that you see more of the more you scroll. And um, I asked them this. I was like, well, what happens if I, because I get to choose what I see at the top of my feed, if I just log in for five minutes, read those, you know, five different posts that I've, I've specified I want to see, and then I leave, they're not able to show me a lot of ads that way. And, and their response was that um, while, yes, maybe if I come in and I scroll down to 100 posts, I'd see 10 ads. But if I don't have a good experience, if, if all those 100 posts are just kind of things that I'm, I'm not really interested in, maybe that's the only time I go to Facebook that week or that month. If I come in and, and I see exactly what I want to see at the top every single time, I'm going to be more likely to open Facebook more regularly. And, and probably just by, by chance, by the fact that I'm coming back all the time, I will, even though maybe I see those things right away, I will eventually start to scroll down and at the same time have a better experience. So they see this as a long-term play, right? They want to make the experience as good as possible and then hope that people will be... Uh, uh, kind of intrigued enough to keep scrolling on. Obviously, if everyone just looked at the top three posts and left, I'm, I'm sure that they would have to change this model. But for now, that's how they hope that it works. Well, I also wonder if this is kind of a, a feature that's mainly for geeks, people who spend a lot of time thinking about technology and how it works and really um, want control um, over the technology they use rather than just your average person. Um, I mean, they're releasing this on iOS first. Uh, we talked before the show. Neither of us have gotten the update yet. I just wonder how much they're going to put, if it's something they're going to push or if it's something you're going to have to dig through and find. Well, if you've ever used their, their preferences before, uh, which I realized when I was getting briefed last week that I probably hadn't in about six months, I don't think it's the kind of thing that the casual Facebook user will ever even think about. I don't think the casual Facebook user thinks about a lot of stuff that they offer around privacy and control. I think this is very much for that vocal, you know, top one, two, three percent of users who really do complain. They see some in their feed, and instead of just having an offhand like, "Well, this is stupid. Why am I seeing this?" They actually take it to the next level where they're they're upset or they're you know going uh, and complaining about it vocally on Facebook or on Twitter or whatever. I think this is is probably going to be used by a smaller portion. Of the, uh, of the user base. But um, yeah, Facebook offers all kinds of tools like this that I don't think many people know about. Right. So chances are most people will still be scrolling through lots and lots of ads for a long time, looking at everything that they see, probably. I would imagine. I would imagine this isn't going to have a dramatic impact on their business. I think it's worth noting, but I would be, I would be very surprised. So I know we had a conversation by email about algorithms earlier. Um, Facebook and some other companies, Google, have gotten into a lot of trouble lately about just trusting algorithms and what they think they know about us. Um, and back in December, well-known web designer Eric Meyer wrote a piece. I don't know if you saw this. It was called Inadvertent Algorithmic Cruelty. It was about the Facebook year in review tool that showed off the post. Uh, it was a year in the review, and it just took and it said, here's your most exciting things and that happened this year. Let's review them. And for him, it was his daughter had passed away, and her picture picture showed as the first uh, frame in this year in review thing that's supposed to, you know, just be something fun to look at when you're bored. Uh, and he was really upset by this and, you know, just and wrote a letter to Facebook and I think they apologized. Uh, but is, is this kind of what Facebook is leaning toward trying to, uh, to not trust the algorithm so much and put the control back in, with us? I don't think it's just Facebook that's, that's thinking about this. I think that Twitter and Snapchat and, uh, a lot out of LinkedIn as well. I think a lot of the social companies are realizing that an algorithm can only take them so far. It's not yet advanced enough to recognize things like context or, um, you know, understanding sarcasm, uh, things like that. So I think what you are starting to see is, especially in news curation, like with Twitter, they have these trending hashtags and they'll kind of try to describe, like, why is this hashtag, why is this hashtag trending? And those are, I believe, written by an algorithm, and sometimes they're not written very well. Or the the photo that's in the algorithm or that's accompanying the hashtag won't it won't be appropriate. It won't match up. 
And so those are things that humans can detect and, and understand and say, hey, this is a bad combination. Let's go ahead and manually swap out this photo. Uh, an algorithm, you know, they're learning, but they're not quite there yet. So I think there's definitely a push from the social companies to give more control um, to, to people, to humans, whether they're employees of Facebook or the actual users themselves. Um, I think is, is, you know, they're kind of figuring that out right now, but they're definitely on understanding that leaving it to the, the algorithm alone is not quite enough. So this, as we said, is started, starting with the iOS app for Facebook and then uh, will everyone eventually get it? Yes, it'll eventually get to Android and the web. Um, I think that that's, you know, the, they, they think this is a big enough product that it's not just like a test for them. I mean, they are rolling it out slowly as they do with everything, but it, it will even, I'm told that it will eventually get to everybody. Well, thank you so much, Kurt. Kurt Wagner is a reporter at Recode. He was also on this week's This Week in Google on Wednesday, which you can get at twit.tv. And on Twitter, he's at Kurt Wagner 8 Is there anything else you've posted up on Recode that we should check out this week? Oh, gosh. You know, I actually took a little break from uh, writing about social media, which I always do. I wrote a little bit about fantasy sports. Yahoo is kind of getting into a daily fantasy sports. So if you're a sports fan or a fantasy sports fan, uh, I had a little story about that yesterday. So you can check that out. I'm a sports guy when I'm not doing social media. So I, I enjoy doing those stories. Well, thank you so much, Kurt. Take care. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Bye. Coming up, Uber tries to break apart a class action lawsuit. 21.5 million social security numbers have been stolen and an R2-D2 that can fly. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Casper. Casper is an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the cost. I will tell you that I love my Casper mattress. I've been sleeping on it for four months now. I don't think I will ever buy a different kind of mattress. It feels really, really good to sleep on, and I like to sleep. I like the way they're able to cut costs of dealing with resellers and showrooms so they can pass that savings directly on to me and to you. Casper uses two technologies, latex and memory foam, to make a comfortable mattress that has just the right sink and bounce. A Casper mattress provides long-lasting comfort and support, and you can buy it easily online without ever leaving your house. If you want to try it out first, you can do that too. Casper offers free delivery and painless returns within a 100-day period. I do not think you'll need 100 days, but that is a lot better than lying down in a showroom, which tells you almost nothing and can sometimes not be that comfortable. Anyway, Casper mattresses cost $500 for a twin, $950 for a king, and you can save an additional $50 just because you watch or listen to this show. Go to casper.com slash TN2 and enter the promo code TN2. Now on to a few more stories we're following. TechCrunch uncovered court motions that Uber filed in California today in response to the lawsuit against them. The class action lawsuit against the ride-sharing company argues that all California Uber drivers be classified as employees and not independent contractors. According to today's court documents, Uber aims to turn the class action suit, which claims to represent the desires of all Uber drivers, into something more individual. Uber claims the majority of their drivers would prefer to remain independent contractors and presented evidence to the court to back this up. Today, Apple released a public beta version of iOS 9, the next operating system that will run on iPhones and iPads. Now, this is the first public beta of their mobile operating system that Apple has ever released. Upcoming features include a revamped news app, a better version of the Notes app, and uh, that's Jason Cleanthes there. He was brave enough to install it on his iPad. Now, this is not the main iPad that he uses for work, uh, but he has found that there are all the promised cool features that, that we've seen at WWDC and that we've reported. But as we're seeing now, it's a little slow. It's a little bit buggy. Uh, so if you use an iPad for your main uh, media or work, I would um, be a little careful and think twice before you really download it. Uh, but, you know, you'll have to wait in the fall if you really want the, the safer, more... Uh, stable version. The beta version of OS 10 El Capitan, the updated desktop OS, is also publicly available as of today. And if you want either of the betas, you can get them from beta.apple.com if you are feeling lucky. CNET reports that over 22 million social security numbers were stolen in the recent re recently revealed White House Office of Personnel Management hack. Until now, we knew the hack was massive, but we didn't know just how big it was. 21.5 million social security numbers were stolen from one source 
and 4.2 million from another source. If you quickly did that math, you'll notice it's not exactly accurate. That's because some people were lucky enough to have their social security numbers stolen from both breaches. Today, the federal government also announced that they will provide credit and fraud monitoring, identity theft insurance, full service identity restoration support, and victim recovery assistance to those who were affected. I'm not sure what that means, but it better be good because I think they stole a lot of information. And thanks to Dana Schwartz for pointing me to the story on Toyland.com about a man who hid a drone inside a full-size R2-D2 prop. Why? So he could fly, of course, minus the lame rocket boosters from the Star Wars prequels. Uh, drone builder Otto Diffenbach created the flying R2-D2. There it is there. It's, it's a high-flying R2-D2. And he's created many flying figures. They can all be found at flyguypromotions.com. And if you happen to be in the San Diego area for Comic-Con, you can see Diffenbach show off his creations in person. Here's an update to the interview we did last night with Wall Street Journal reporter, reporter Jeff Fowler about the GoPro Hero 4 Session, the new $400 waterproof GoPro that's shaped like a cube. Eagle-eyed viewer Stan Cook, a.k.a. Hawaii Cop, pointed out that Polaroid came out with a sim similar camera last year called the Cube, and it is currently only $79 on Amazon as opposed to the GoPro, which was $400. And this one is marked so you can tell which way is up. Was one of the complaints our reviewer had that you know you'd have to look at the video like that because you weren't sure how to hold it. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.